One of my Voodoo 3 2000 PCI seems to be a great overclocker. I discovered this while investigating a voltage mod to lower the core voltage of my Voodoo 3s. If you're interested to know more about this topic, you can check out 4 videos on my channel. A Voodoo 3 2000 has a stock frequency of 143 MHz at a voltage of around 2.6 volts. Unfortunately, you cannot simply control the voltage of a Voodoo 3 using software. To change the voltage supplied to the 3DFX chip, you have to install a tiny mod. A variable resistor connected in parallel to the existing resistance allows us to fine-tune the voltage required for any frequency we set using the 3DFX overclocking utility. As it turns out, this Voodoo 3 2000 PCI could easily reach 175 MHz, undervolted to around 2.45 volts. The results of a recent survey shows that the majority of you want to see this card being pushed to 183 MHz. I briefly tested this frequency in a previous video, but the card was artifacting due to insufficient voltage supplied to the 3DFX chip. This is due to the voltage mod, which limits the voltage to a maximum of 2.48 volts. Today, we are going to explore if this Voodoo 3 is capable to render Unreal Tournament at 183 MHz without artifacting by increasing the voltage. During the video, you will also get more details on how to participate in a giveaway of an InfiRay P2 Pro thermal camera, organized by X Infrared X. In this video, you will see footage taken with the InfiRay P2 Pro thermal camera, revealing details that are usually hidden from the naked eye. In another video, I mentioned that increasing the frequency of this Voodoo 3 to 183 MHz comes with a few obstacles. Since the 3DFX chip and the memory are clocked synchronously, raising the frequency will overclock both. The memory of this Voodoo 3 is rated for 166 MHz only, which could prove to be the limiting factor. Another issue is the voltage supplied to the 3DFX chip. Since I don't want to overvolt the card, there are only 0.1 volts until we reach the default voltage. To unlock this reserve, I can replace the 1 kilo ohm with a higher valued resistor. This should allow me to fine tune the voltage close to 2.6 volts, and we will be able to determine at what voltage this card is stable. An unmodified card has a resistance of 128 ohms and delivers 2.61 volts. The 1 kilo ohm resistor dropped the resistance to a maximum of 116 ohms, which resulted in a maximum voltage of 2.48 volts. You can use online tools to determine resistor values connected in parallel. Based on the result, it makes sense to replace the 1 kilo ohm with a 10 kilo ohm resistor. The modification is easy since I just have to replace the resistor connected to the cables going to the card. And with a 10 kilo ohm resistor in place and at its maximum resistance, the new value is a bit more than 126 ohms. Exactly what the calculator predicted. The card is now back in the test system and we can measure the voltage supplied to the 3DFX chip. A resistance of 126 ohms configures the power supply to deliver almost 2.6 volts. Great, we unlocked about 0.12 volts of additional power for the card. Let's not waste more time and get this card to 183 MHz. I'm using the 3DFX overclocking tab supplied by the 3DFX tools to push the frequency to 183 MHz. After a restart of Windows, we can start Unreal Tournament and see if this voltage is enough. And it looks like Unreal Tournament is working at this frequency and voltage. At least I couldn't spot any artifacts, not during the intro, gameplay or the menu. Let's find out at what voltage the card starts artifacting. By reducing the resistance of the variable resistor, we can slowly lower the voltage that is supplied to the 3DFX chip. And at 2.51 volts, we can see issues appearing on the screen. This is not too surprising and it is very similar to what we have seen with the previous mod at 2.48 volts. Increasing the voltage to 2.55 volts seems to make the artifacts disappear. And although I could play a few rounds of Capture the Flag without issues, 3D Mark 2000 shows artifacts in the helicopter benchmark, even at 2.6 volts. Unfortunately, the card is not flawless at 183 MHz and a stock voltage of 2.6 volts. For reference, a Voodoo 3 3500 demands a voltage of around 2.75 volts for this frequency. The card would probably work at such high voltage, but I feel this would push the card beyond its limits and reduce its remaining life expectancy. 
Let's stay for a moment at this overclock and have a look at the temperatures. At 183 MHz and a voltage of 2.6, the card absolutely requires active cooling. During my tests, I had a fan blowing air over the card the entire time. The voltage regulator is the hottest component on the card, at around 50 degrees. While the heatsink of the 3DFX chip remains cool at 35 degrees. This footage is taken with the Infiray P2 Pro thermal camera, for which a giveaway is organized for my audience by xinfraredx.com. If you want to take your chances to win this camera, head over to the Infiray P2 Pro giveaway campaign, to which you will find links in the video description. To participate, you need to enter your name, email address and write a comment below the post using the word X Infrared X. The winner will be notified by email within 5 days from the date of the drawing. I will also announce the winner in a pinned comment below this video. There are also 50 and 30 US dollar gift vouchers to be won. Don't miss your chance to win one of those little amazing cameras. If you participated in the giveaway but didn't win, or you're watching this video after the campaign has ended, you can buy the Infiray P2 Pro camera from xinfraredx.com. Links, including a 10% discount code, are in the video description. The Infiray P2 Pro comes with an optional macro lens, which is clipped to the camera using a magnet. I checked with the campaign organizer and the macro lens is part of the giveaway. With the macro lens attached to the camera, we can get much closer to the board of the Voodoo card and see a lot more details. This is the back of the card, where the 3DFX chip is located. We stay below 50 degrees thanks to the fan on the other side. To my surprise, the memory chips get quite hot. Depending on their location, they could even reach higher temperatures than the 3DFX chip. Maybe it would be a good idea to add some heatsinks to those chips. But it is fascinating to see the actual chip become visible using the thermal camera. We can clearly see where the silicon chip is located within the package. So let's see what happens when we remove the fan. Without active cooling, the voltage regulator, the 3DFX chip and the memory heat up significantly. And very soon after, artifacts appear on the screen. Even though I put the fan back, the card crashed at the still high temperatures. If you ever wondered what happens to the memory when a card crashes, here you can see it. Let me speed up the scene so we can see the effect better. The moment the crash occurs, the memory immediately reduces its temperature. I am no expert, but I think the 3DFX chip halts further execution of commands and therefore stops communication with the memory chips. Since the system is no longer recoverable, I'm going to switch it off. Now the memory chips inside the package become invisible, because no current is flowing anymore. This effect also works the other way around. Back in Windows, the memory chips shine through the housing again. Not very strong, but they are visible. But look how they change once Unreal Tournament is utilizing the memory. So, the card does work at 183 MHz in Unreal Tournament when cooled properly. But it does show minor artifacts in 3 Mark 2000. I think we have gone beyond the capabilities of this card. What to do with this Voodoo 3 now? One of you suggested a model with the designation Voodoo 3 3333. I really like this monodigit model number. The targeted frequency for such a model should be around 175 MHz. 175 MHz was actually part of the survey and the second most requested card. All that is changing is the made up model number. We will get a nice frequency bump and it should be possible to slightly reduce the voltage. Currently, there is a 130 ohm resistor on this card, which is responsible to set the voltage supplied to the 3DFX chip to 2.61 volts. To get to 2.45 volts, the resistor needs to have a value of 115 ohms. I measured this value while the voltage mod was still attached to the card. Unfortunately, I do not have a resistor with a value of 115 ohms. The closest values I have are 110 and 120 ohms. At 110 ohms, the 3DFX chip would receive less than 2.45 volts, which may not be sufficient to operate this card properly at 175 MHz. This is why I will opt for the 120 ohm resistor, which should set the voltage to around 2.5 volts. Still 0.1 volts lower than stock, but at a much higher frequency. I think this would make a fine Voodoo 3 card which by the way is faster than any Voodoo 3 that 3DFX released for the PCI interface.
The Voodoo 3 3500 was clocked higher at 183 MHz, but was available for the HEP bus only. With a new resistor in place, the multimeter reports a resistance of 119 ohms, which is about 10 ohms less compared to an unmodified card. And this is it! The hardware modification is complete. We can now verify the new voltage of the card in a running system. The 3DFX chip receives 2.5 volts, exactly what was expected. What is missing is a proper BIOS for this card, with an appropriate boot message and the corresponding frequency. To achieve this, I will be using the TDFX BIOS editor. In this editor, we can modify the boot message and set the frequency. Now this Voodoo 3 2000 becomes the Voodoo 3 3333, a completely new model of the Voodoo 3 lineup. I can set the frequency by modifying the PLL control 1 value under the registers tab. For a Voodoo 3 2000, the value is set to 58, which corresponds to 143 MHz. To reach Voodoo 3 3333 territory, we should set the value to 71 or 72. For now, I will keep the value at 71, but based on my calculations, a Voodoo 3 3333 should have the value set to 72. Unfortunately, I made the calculations after I had done all my testing, but I don't think there will be much of a performance difference. Now we can save the BIOS and prepare for the flashing process. But before we flash the card, let's return to the stock frequency, remove the drivers and the 3DFX tools. I want to see how the card behaves when installed in a new system. Existing tools and drivers could influence how the card appears. With everything cleaned up, we can move on to flashing the card with a new BIOS. The 3DFX flashing utility is quite basic, but it does the job. It actually helped me fix the card of today's video, which suffered from no VGA output. Once the flashing process is complete, we can reboot the system and hope for a new boot message. And here it is, the Voodoo 3 3333 has finally arrived. It is still a Voodoo 3 2000 BIOS, but with a higher frequency, as we will see shortly after installing the Windows drivers and the 3DFX tools. Everest reports a Voodoo 3 2000, but with a frequency of 174 MHz for GPU and memory. The 3DFX tools also report 174 MHz. It looks like the frequency in the BIOS is picked up correctly by the driver. Even the overclocking tab shows the default frequency of this Voodoo 3 as 174 MHz. Of course, I tested the card thoroughly with a fan pointing at it. And I am very happy to report that everything works flawlessly. I could play several rounds of Unreal Tournament without seeing any artifacts on the screen. There were also no crashes or any other unexpected behavior. 3D Mark 2000 and 3D Mark 2001 also completed without glitches. Here is a small summary of the test results. You can see the scores of this card at different frequencies. We have the card at 143 MHz, the default settings, and at 174 MHz, the current and final settings, but also at 183 MHz, which pushed the card to its limits. And with this, we have reached the end of today's video. Do not forget to participate in the Infiray P2 Pro giveaway. Maybe you will be the lucky winner of this thermal camera. I wish all of you good luck. And I hope you enjoyed today's content. If you did, please consider giving this video a like and subscribe to my channel so you will not miss any future content. A special thanks goes out to all my Patreons who support this channel with their monthly contributions. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.